Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check, if you would. Please type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great, I've got enough responses. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, please feel free to let me know in the chat box. As always, keep in mind that no one trade is guaranteed to profit. There's risk with each and every trade that you take. I think we all understand that. There's some nice ways to manage risk uh, using our Web Trader and, and Avatrade Go app. So we'll, we'll go over some of those features as well. Uh, as we go along, keep in mind that what we're covering is meant to be educational in nature and not to be taken as financial advisement. Uh, real quick, what is fundamental analysis before we get on the live charts? Well, basically it's the news. It's what's going on around the world, uh, whether it's economic announcements that are you know regularly scheduled events, we'll take a look at some that are upcoming today, uh, or extraordinary type of news, such as the Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, in the past it was Brexit or, uh, the, the pandemic headlines that you just can't predict what they'll be, when they'll be, that type of fundamental news also moves the markets. And you can be ready for that uh, a lot of times with pending orders in strategic locations, just waiting for news that might break an important price level that might indicate momentum for you. And I like to call that putting trip lines in the market, uh, usually with buy stop or sell stop pending orders. Uh, above a resistance level or below a support level that, that you feel if it breaks through that level, then, hey, it could keep running uh, in that direction. And so you can prepare for the unknown kind of in terms of fundamental news in, in that way. Uh, at least it's one way to do it. Now, as we go along, if you have any questions, you want to give any input, please do so uh, in, the, in the chat box area, and I'm happy to address questions or share pertinent information. Now, uh, as we get going, it, it's good to get an idea of uh, the, the fundamental uh, situation. And we'll do that largely by looking at the economic calendar. If you've looked at the headlines today, uh, nothing really major. If you look at the volatility index, you'll see that it, it's up a little, down a little. Uh, no major movement on the, the volatility or fear index. So today, it feels like a maybe a trending day, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a ranging day where the movement goes up and back down, up and back down, uh, which is typical on a day where there's not large breaking news, although that could change, uh, obviously, with, with any, any big headline that could hit. But that's what we'll likely see as we look at some of the charts is that uh, there's a support level above or below and a resistance level above on a lot of these instruments and that they're for the time being ranging uh, quite a bit between these levels. And so we'll take a look and, and talk about some of the economic announcements that are coming, the fundamental news situation on the economic side uh, and, and see what might make sense to, to pair up in terms of some of the technical analysis along with the fundamental news. Now, one way to go about looking at the fundamental news would be to use our mobile app. You also could use our web trader. Now, if I expand the view on the mobile app, let me go to a full screen view. If you don't have the Avatrade Go mobile app, uh, you can get it from the, the major app stores. I would say go ahead, check it out, add it to your phone. And we'll take a look at a feature here in this menu. If you click on the tab here, we can go to uh, Market Buzz. If you're interested in trading on stocks in particular, the market buzz is a nice choice to look at. It's an advanced feature from Trading Central that gives you up to the minute, literally up to the minute, uh, information regarding trending stocks from articles that are pulled from all kinds of places on the internet as they appear. So uh, what's trending the most right now? JP Morgan, makes sense banks would be trending, right? We're talking about 
uh, interest rate hikes coming maybe this year in the U.S., monetary policy being talked about today in, in European Union. Uh, you know, bank stocks in general might do well as nations uh, talk about or, or actually institute increases in interest rates to stave off some of this hyperinflation. Now, uh, we also see Delta Airlines is trending. Makes sense. Coming out of a pandemic, uh, airlines probably are starting to get more business. So makes sense that airlines might have a lot of articles. So if you're interested in trading on any of these that, that, that are trending, and as you scroll down, there are more and more. Tesla, Meta Platforms, makes sense. These are names that you know have been in the news. So if you tap on one of these, it will bring up the articles that have been found in, in most recent time backwards to older articles. And so it gives you an idea of you know, what direction people are thinking this will move, et cetera, some general analysis. And then you have all the articles. Okay, These are here because they talk about this particular company. And, and, and the article might help you decide whether you think the stock price will go up or down. This article's from one hour ago. The next one is from two hours ago. You see it, how this would help you with your fundamental analysis. And if you want to read the article, you tap on it. It takes you to the source of where that article was pulled from. So you could quickly uh, see what's trending, analyze the, the stock information, and then make a move on a stock uh, if, if it makes sense to you. And so... Uh, really cool tools that are found in the app and also in the web trader platform. And and yes, you can trade on your MT4 and your MT5 account from this app and from the web trader platform. It's just that uh, we have advanced features that you're not going to find directly in the, the MT4 and MT5 platforms. Henry, you're saying you think core retail sales are coming out. Yeah, there's some retail sales numbers. And it, since you mentioned that, let's take a look. If we look under this menu again, and we go to the economic calendar, then we'll see what announcements are coming up. And may, maybe we'll do that uh, on, on the full screen web trader. Right now, let's take a look. Uh, let's say you, you have a field that uh, you think today doesn't have high, high momentum one way or the other. You know, there's some fear about inflation. There's some positivity about some other things. And, and you see the volatility index is kind of flat. and and if you notice that that's the type of fundamental news day it is, you might look at the signals and see the signals that are coming in under featured ideas and analyst views and see what's being recommended. Dollar index expected maybe to drop. That's the signal. Why would that be? Well, when fear is not real high, the U.S. dollar tends to be a little weaker. Uh, you know, So you can start to fundamentally think about why these signals would be as they are and, and pick the ones that you think make sense. U.S. dollar down against the Canadian. Why might that be? Well, again, fear is kind of low today. And uh, you've got the Canadian dollar's been strong because of crude oil being so high. Okay, The number one G, uh, factor on, on the Canadian GDP is crude oil exports. And since crude oil has been so high, that makes sense that that could cause the Canadian dollar maybe to be kind of strong. So if you start to put together fundamental reasons why you might trust one signal over another, then you take a look and you say, okay, I like the USD Canadian signal. Now it will give you the technical analysis if you tap on that. Breaks down the support and resistance levels, the prices where you should buy or, or the price where you should take profit potentially. A uh, couple suggested take profit marks. It also gives you an alternate scenario. If the movement breaks beyond the resistance level in the opposite direction of the preferred signal, then it gives you an alternate scenario that maybe you could have a pending order in case it goes the wrong way that would trigger in the opposite direction with take profit suggestions uh, on the upside as well. So uh, very cool signal features that can go along with uh, your fundamental analysis once you have an idea of what direction you prefer to trade. Now, uh, we'll go over the risk management tools as well, which are also in the app, but let's look on the web trader also. I want to make sure that, that we have time to, to look at both the, the app and the web trader as we work through some strategies now. So I'll go ahead and uh, close off the view on my phone. Let me shut my phone off to save some battery life on it. And uh, let's take a look then. If we log in here from the main website, we'll be in the web trader. And again, the web trader and the app trade on your MT4 and MT5 accounts. 
hey, I'm on a dummy account here. Uh, you could easily be trading on a real account, a demo account, MT4, MT5. You can switch between your accounts uh, very easily from the web trader and, and the mobile app. So uh, you have these options for you. Now, as we look at some different instruments, and so maybe we're interested in looking at something that uh, we feel is, is somewhat predictable today. How about Euro USD? And, and let's look at a reason why the Euro USD might be interesting to trade on today. If we go to one of the other advanced features here from Trading Central, let's look at the economic calendar. Which again, all of these features are available uh, straight from our platform. You don't have to go searching for other locations for, for this information. Now, uh, we see later today, we've got the lending rate, uh, the interest rate decision coming out of the European Union. And the expectation is the interest rate decision will be to leave the interest rate at zero. Okay, it's currently at zero. The exp expectation is in this column. It's expected to stay zero and the decision will come out soon and it's marked as a high level announcement. That means it's expected to have a big effect on the euro, okay? And on the markets in general that are connected with the European Union. And so what do you think the effect will be if the expectation is the European Union is going to keep zero interest rate and, and if they do, then they're probably going to come out and talk as they have recently uh, about the fact that they think inflation is not that bad, that it's only energy related and temporary, that the rest of the economy is doing well, uh, et cetera. That's what they've said up till now. And so if they come out and say that again, basically saying we don't have any reason to raise interest rates, inflation's not that bad. That's been their take on it so far. And that's why the expectation is interest rates will stay at zero. They don't see any need to stave off inflation by raising interest rates up. Uh, the opposite has been true in the U.S. The U.S. has hyperinflation. They've admitted to it. The FOMC committee, they, they've, all, they've all said, hey, we're going to raise the interest rate multiple times this year, not even just a quarter percent, maybe a 50 basis point increase at the next uh, chance, the next meeting that they have in the FOMC committee and, and suggestions in the U.S. that interest rate might be raised five, six times this year. And the European Union's taking the opposite approach saying, no, we don't need to raise interest rates. So the expectation is interest rate won't be increased. Now, it doesn't mean they, they won't. They came out and raised the interest rate. The euro would probably strengthen like crazy because that would be unexpected for the interest rate to go up. But what if they come out, they talk dovish, meaning they, they, they talk the way they've been, saying, no, there's no need to in, increase interest rates. We'll keep it at zero. If that's how they come out, that would then feed into a weaker euro potentially, right? And so pairing the European currency, the euro against the US currency, the USD, might create a situation where you have strong horse, weak horse pairing. That's easy to predict the movement potentially. Why? Because one nation is saying for sure they're going to raise interest rates, right? Or, or very, very likely that they will. And another nation expected to say, no, we're not going to raise interest rates. We're keeping it at zero. So that might be a pairing based on the economic calendar, based on what we know fundament, fundamentally has already been said in the U.S. and the European Union. That might make sense fundamentally to look for an entry point on Euro USD then to think that the USD could strengthen and pull the euro down based on this fundamental news of 0% interest rates expected to be carried out in the European Union and the opposite being done in the U.S. Type OK if you understand that concept. Higher interest rates in the U.S. could lead to stronger U.S. dollar. Zero percent interest rate in the European Union could continue a weakness of the euro in general. Or type questions if you don't understand that concept. We're just trying to line up the fundamental news before looking at the actual movement and entry point potential. Uh, okay, great. Uh, yeah, the, Henry, there are retail sales coming, uh, numbers coming out of the U.S. Okay, so we see here import, export prices. Folks will be looking at that to see if there's more inflation, right? The expe expectation is uh, export prices up from 3% to 3.1% increase. Import prices up 
from 1.4% increase to 2.1% increase. So you can see out of the US, there's an expectation of even more inflation on the numbers. Expectation of increased prices higher than the last increase. Okay, so you can see why in the US they say, hey, we've got to raise interest rates, right? Uh, and, and, and then we see retail sales coming out, all right? There's an expected increase in retail sales. What does that do when there's high demand on retail sales? What does that do to price? It drives price up more when there's increased demand. So if retail sales come in higher than expected, again, that, that feeds into the idea that, boy, they're going to have to do something about this high, uh, these high prices and things. If the demand is so high, uh, if retail sales come in higher than expected, usually that's good news. Usually economic numbers coming in higher than expected are good uh, when it comes to retail sales and such, but, but that also is driving inflation fears, okay? So uh, I think there's no way around it. There are fears about inflation in the U.S. and interest rate increases coming uh, are, are, are deemed to be uh, almost certain that interest rate increases are coming in the U.S. So very interesting day setting up for the Euro-USD pairing and, and really any uh, Euro pairing and USD pairing or related instruments like the, the indices in those countries and those regions. Uh, retail sales. Uh, Laura, you're asking what does it mean uh, retail sales? Oh, MOM, that's month over month. That's the increase in retail sales from last month to this month. And when it says Y over Y, that's year over year. So in the U.S., you've been seeing year over year, I don't know, 8 percent, 10 percent increase uh, from year over year on a lot of the inflationary numbers. And month to month, you might see a 2 percent or a 3 percent increase, which is huge from one month to the next month to have th that type of increase. Because you, if you annualize that times 12 months, uh, you, you can see that that adds up to 10 percent inflation, even higher. And so. Uh, it, in terms of retail sales, we're not talking about prices, we're talking about the amount of sales. But you understand that if retail sales demand is up higher than expected, then the expectation is, wow, then you know, what do retailers do? If there's a huge demand for their products, they raise prices. That's what happens, uh, supply and demand. Uh, okay, Laura, so uh, how does it influence the indices and specifically you're asking. And so uh, there's no one-to-one -one correlation, right? But uh, typically in a normal circumstance when there's not hyperinflation on the economy, when you see retail sales come in higher than expected, that's deemed good news usually. Usually the, the, the stock market will go up, hey, it's a healthy economy, things look good, retail sales were higher than expected and, and you see the markets lift with that kind of news. However, because of the hyperinflation situation, many times this good news that's showing increased demand for things is actually being viewed as negative because it solidifies the fact that interest rate increases are coming. Because there's so much inflation, the economy's roaring so much that every time good numbers come in showing high demand, that, that the fear actually goes up that interest rate increases will come faster and larger. And so Wall Street doesn't like high interest rates. They like cheap money, free money. They want to borrow and expand on, on very low interest rates uh, rather than fearing that interest rates will go up. So it's kind of bizarro land where over the past months, as we've seen really good economic numbers come in, they've led to fears that interest rates will go up uh, in response to those high inflationary numbers. And so we've actually seen the market pull back in temporary spots one week at a time, few days at a time as high inflationary numbers come in or as really good retail numbers come in, et cetera. Very good question. Uh, okay, so let's go and take a look at some instruments at, at, at uh, some potential entry points, exit points on some pairings. And so if we look at Euro USD. Let's expand the chart. And I'm looking at two hour candles here. And wow, look at this. Let me pull this down. Look what is formed here. 
And maybe I go to a four hour candle. Look at the resistance level. Resistance down, resistance down, resistance down, resistance down, resistance down. Why, why can't the euro break this resistance lately? And I think we've already answered that question, right? Because the expectation is the European Union doesn't see much of an inflationary problem long term and, and doesn't believe they need to raise the interest rate. And so why should the euro strengthen if the interest rate is going to be kept at zero? That's the expectation anyways. It could come out that they raise it, and then you'd probably see this resistance level broken. If today, unexpectedly, if today the interest rate was increased uh, in the European Union, this resistance level would boop, bye-bye, most likely. Okay? So why not put a pending order up here in case the unexpected news comes? Have a pending order up here to buy with your stop loss back below. There's no, no problem to do that. Likely that won't happen in terms of interest rate going up. It's not expected. But if it does, and this comes flying through this resistance level that it's been having trouble breaking, you could have a pending order ready to go with a small risk with your stop loss back below if it reaches your entry point up here. So you could easily say, okay, buy, execute if the price hits, and put a price somewhere above this resistance, 109.40, something like that. Okay. You could say execute if price hits 109.40. That likely would happen if they unexpectedly increased the interest rate today. You have your stop loss then back below this broken resistance. If it broke it, your stop loss could be back below here. 109.15 maybe. Why should it pull back down to 109.15 if indeed it breaks through that resistance with some kind of euro strengthening news? Could have a false breakthrough, but you know that's the risk you take every once in a while. Uh, 109.15. Okay, so take profit then. If it if it was some kind of increased interest rate today and it broke this resistance, then it very easily could go up to the next resistance level, somewhere up around a dollar ten. Okay, maybe it would. You, you, just before that, like a dollar nine ninety, something like that. Just before that resistance level at a dollar ten, and so you look and you say, okay, potential profit double my risk. Doesn't hurt to put these trip lines, as I like to call them, in the market, in case the news changes. Remember, there's two types of fundamental news: the kind you expect or know about, and the kind that comes unexpectedly. So we're preparing for an unexpected headline about an interest rate increase today when the uh, monetary policy is discussed. Likely it won't happen, but prepare for it because sometimes it does. Uh, and we know there's big potential news coming with, with that uh, European Central Bank uh, talk, policy talk and decision coming today. So now we set that up and you, then you say, okay, how much am I willing to lose on a move like this? And so you should have worked out already how much is your balance, how much are you willing to risk on each trade? And uh, and so let's say I know I'm willing to risk 250 per trade. So I see possible loss 25, so I can go 10 times bigger here on my trade size. So I can go one full lot. And now you see it calculated my risk, 250, possible loss, possible profit, double that, 500. Okay, good. So now I'm all set. I don't have to break this resistance level to hit my take profit. Uh, the only way I buy on this is if it breaks this resistance level, and then it could have a smooth coast up to the next resistance. And if it is a fake breakthrough, it hits my, my, my entry price on the buy, and then it pulls back while well, I'm only risking a small amount, X percent of my balance that, that I know I'm willing to risk per trade with a much better potential profit. And so there. I, pre I prepared a uh, pending order for what could happen, right? Now let's trade on what we know. Fundamentally, we know the U.S. has all but promised to have multiple interest rate increases. We also know the European Union is expected not to increase their interest rate today and that their policy has been that there's, you know, the inflation is only related to energy and that there's not a big inflation problem. We know that that's what has been said already leading up to today. So if more of that talk continues, there could be a fundamental reason for the euro to weaken and the USD to strengthen. 
because of the, the opposite monetary policy coming out of the U.S. so far. And so with an existing resistance level that's been respected multiple times and news coming today that could work in your favor, it might make sense to do a market move then uh, on the euro USD pairing. So if we set up a sell position then for a market move, again, the risk management could be in our favor, right? I don't have to risk much to put my stop loss above this resistance, okay? So I could put my stop loss here beyond the resistance and only need to risk maybe a quarter of my potential profit if I plan to take profit at this support level down here. Okay, it doesn't even have to break the support level where it was at not that long ago, just earlier this week. It was testing the support level down here, hit and up. Okay, so uh, this easily could come rushing back down. It's set up fundamentally that the wind might be at your back in your favor for a move like this. There's no guarantee, so let's put a stop loss. Or you could use Ava Protect on a market move. You could say, you know what, with the big announcement today, this could bounce through and then bounce back down. And so maybe I don't want to use a stop loss when I know there's big announcement, the market could get volatile, then it'll go the, the way you expect. And maybe you don't want it to hit your stop loss in that, in that sense. So we could use Ava Protect on this one and say, if I do one day protection, you could protect by the hour, by the day. If I do uh, one day or two days protection, that gets through today's announcement. So let's do one day protection maybe. and. Then I say uh, my take profit, I, I still want down here, 108, let's say 108.20, just before the support level down there. Take profit, 108.20. So take profits just before this low point where it bounced up this week. And stop loss, I can hold off on putting one for now because I have Ava Protect. And... Uh, now I can say, well, again, I, I had said I was willing to risk X amount per trade or invest X amount per trade as a potential loss. So it, if this protection only costs me $61 for a full day's protection, then I can go with a bigger trade. 0 0.25, the protection costs me 153. And if I'm willing to go 250, then I can go with a bigger trade. 0 0.4, that's about 250. 245 is the cost of the protection. So you see when the protection ends, I'm risk-free on any losses from, from the movement direction for that protected time period. After that, I could come back and put a stop loss as it gets near the end of my protection if, I, if it hasn't profited yet or closed. Uh, and then you see my potential profit is better than what the protection costs, okay? And so I could set that in motion and I'm all set. The other option is to use a stop loss. And, and I'll show you an example of setting up the stop loss here would be somewhere up here above the resistance. So let's say 109.58. Okay, possible loss, 176, possible, possible profit, 375. Again, if I'm willing to risk 250, then I can go a little bigger trade if I'm using this stop loss price. And there's about 250, 251 possible loss to my stop loss. It's changing by the second because the market's moving. And my possible profit, about double that, a little better than double that. So if I want to use a stop loss instead of Ava Protect, I can do that as well. And I can add Ava Protect with the stop loss. That's a, an acceptable strategy as well. All right, so here I am. Uh, I've got my market move, and there we go. So I've got a market move in the direction that the current fundamental news might make sense to me to do, which is resistance level established, respecting the resistance level, and the fundamental news kind of is maybe in the favor that this could drop. Then you back yourself up with a stop loss and a buy position in case the fundamental news changes and it breaks this resistance, you've got a buy position ready to go. So the idea here is, you're not necessarily trying to be right with guessing the market or guessing what the announcement will be today. Rather than trying to be right when you trade, many times you're more profitable if you just try to be smart when you trade. And what I mean is I'm preparing for both directions here. I'm preparing for the unknown 
and I'm trading with what I think I know. And by the way, you might think you know something different, meaning you can look at the same information I'm looking at and your mind might decide that, no, the idea right now should be to go the opposite direction. That's fine. That's okay. As long as when you make your trade, it's based on the fundamental news as you understand it and you're looking at the technical analysis and, and reading the price levels and, and, and the move that you make, if it makes sense with your technical analysis, interpretation, resistance level, support level, reversing trend, uh, et cetera, and it makes sense with how you interpret the fundamental news, then great. That's what's most important. Not that you agree exactly with what the direction I pick, but that you understand the power of pairing the fundamental news along with proper technical entry points and exit points. Or rather than saying proper, I should say potentially opportunistic entry points and exit points. And opportunistic means limiting your risk in a smart way with, with a potential profit that can be quite rewarding. Any questions, uh, input at this point before we look at something else? Ra Raul, the, the take profit was lower than the stop loss because it was a sell position. So when you're selling, your take profit's at a lower price and your stop loss is at a higher price. Ah, Ria, you will not find a fear index. You're going to find the VIX volatility index, otherwise referred to as by many as a fear index, measurement of how much fear is in the market. Uh, and, and you can look in a lot of places to see the, the VIX volatility index. Uh, the one we have only runs certain hours. It's not 24 hours a day. Uh, and, and you can look in other places to find the volatility. It's the VIX S&P 500 volatility index. You can find it in lots of places. Uh, we do have it on our platform. Here, I'll show you. VIX, S&P, short-term futures, VXXB. That's the VIX volatility index. And so here it is. I don't think it's running yet today. Okay. This is the VIX volatility index. And it, it'll be active. The, the trading hours on that are, are different uh, than the current hours of the webinar. You see over here, it's grayed out. means it's not running yet. Okay. But there are other versions of the VIX that, that run early, starting earlier in the day. And so we can go to different uh, websites. Investing.com uh, has the VIX volatility index that's running uh, right now. They show the price on it. And you'll see it's pretty flat today. It hasn't moved a lot. Good question. Okay, so I don't see any suggestions coming up. Let's take a look at maybe at something like gold. And maybe I look, uh, I had a gold position running from the last webinar. It looks like it's in profit. Could close it, could leave it open. You see the gold symbol means I protected it with Ava Protect. Uh, it's in profits. We had another trade from the last webinar that already closed in profit. We'll just let that run. We see the other position we, we opened, this Euro USD sell has started out in the right direction. Makes sense because the, the headwinds are in our favor fundamentally. Uh, okay, so if we look at gold, let me bring gold back up. It jumped back to the Aussie. Okay, here's the gold chart. And if we go to something like two-hour candles, we can get a bigger picture view of what's happening. Gold's been pushing back up a bit. What do you think could pull gold down? What about U.S. policy that they've promised that we've already talked about could pull gold down against the U.S. dollar? If they do what in the U.S. coming up at the FOMC committee, what will it? What what might pull gold down against the U.S. dollar? I'm testing you. This is a quiz. Yeah, in, interest rate increases tend to strengthen the currency. And, and also by raising the interest rate, the whole point of why they want to do that in the U.S. is to lower inflation. And so 
if that's the point of raising interest rates and then they do indeed raise interest rates, uh, you know, gold is is bought up a lot of times as an inflationary safe haven. So when there's fear of high inflation, gold tends to rise up. Well, if there's fear that interest rates are going to increase to get rid of inflation, what then naturally might happen to gold? Might make sense as the U.S. dollar strengthens that gold could come down. The opposite reaction of inflation fears is uh, fear of interest rate increases many times. So as we look at gold then, in the short term, you might say, hey, high inflation's there, gold could push up in the coming day, coming weeks, et cetera. But you also could say bigger picture, if I start to look at one day candles, one week candles, you might say, you know what? I like this resistance level at the all time high, up at 2070 something. It hit that all time high, it tested it again and came flying right back down. So you might start to look at this and say, all right, if gold's gonna push up with inflation fears still, I might like a pending order somewhere up here on gold that if it does reach near this all-time high i'll short it and then um be patient that as interest rates are increased in the us that gold could work its way back down to one of these support levels and you wouldn't have to risk much at that point if it if gold did climb up near the all-time high to have your stop loss somewhere above the all-time high so with a very little risk potential but a very large potential profit if gold indeed gives you a price up near the all-time high so inflation fears are still there we know there's reason why inflation fears could be uh lowered as interest rate increases may become in the u.s so uh, a patient pending order somewhere up at a price near the all-time high could make sense to short gold from those heights just something to look for in terms of a longer term type patient move that you could wait on. Now, if you're saying, well, what can I do right now? A market move, what might make sense for gold? Well, then you might start looking for support levels to say, okay, if gold pulls down in the short term, where might I buy from since inflation is still high right now? And so you start looking at old support levels and you see it actually bounced off one today, okay? This was an old resistance level here, resistance down. And then you see here it broke above that. And then that acted as support, support. And again today, support that it's bouncing up from. Okay, we see that support level. So in the short term, you could take a little scalp buy position if you think gold should go up with the high inflation that's out there. If you think the retail sales out of the US that are coming in today, we looked at the economic calendar. If you think they're gonna come in better than expected, and that's gonna say, wow, that could lead to more inflation if those retail sales are so strong. If you think that might happen today, then there might be a fundamental reason why gold could bounce and test at least this high point up here that it was at just yesterday, okay? So uh, if we zoom in then on say 15 minute candles, we can get a better look at this support level here and the fact that it's bouncing off that and maybe you have a take profit up near 1980, this resistance level here, as a, if you're looking to scalp the current movement. So uh, potential buy position moves, if you're bullish on gold, I, don't, I say if, because you don't have to be bullish on gold, but if you are, there's a little support level here that you could put your stop loss down here, maybe 1965, risk only about $5 per ounce, and you could have a take profit up here at this, this week's high area, which is right up in this area. Okay, there's a resistance level that you could say, okay, I'd take profit up here near 1980. And so you'd be going after more than double potential profit than what you'd have to risk here on a buy position on gold, just as an example. So uh, a lot you can do here with the current movements. And remember I said today looks like maybe a ranging day because the news is not that strong. There's, there's the, the volatility index is showing 1%, 2% uh, up or down, not, not huge swings in fear as of yet anyways. So the current environment uh, lends itself to a ranging movement. Down, hits the support level, back up. Hits the resistance level, back down. Hits the support level, back up. This is what we call ranging, where the news isn't strong enough to break the resistance or the support level. So it keeps bouncing between those prices. and so. The, the, the technical pattern says, okay, maybe you should buy here. 
And the fundamental news also maybe says, hey, maybe you should buy here. And so if you like that setup, you could put a stop loss down here, small limited risk compared to the potential profit all the way up to the resistance area up here. Looks like a nice little potential move. All right, everybody, I think this is a good place to stop. We've been going for a good 40 minutes. Yeah. Any last questions, any uh, input or questions that, that you would like me to address before we end things? Okay, great. I must be crystal clear. Everybody's still here, uh, so it must be interesting enough to stay, but I don't see any questions popping up, so uh, I'm guessing I must have been pretty clear. Uh, if the next session I'll be doing is next week. Uh, should be Tuesday, I believe, Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Uh, UK time, so I invite you all to join if it fits your schedule. Uh, and by the way, if you ever miss a live session but you want to see what we covered, by the next business day, you go to our YouTube channel, and uh, in the English webinar section, you'll find all my webinars uploaded. Uh, they're, they're all recorded, in, including this session. Greg, I think I just asked, answered that question before I saw it pop up. Uh, yeah, all the sessions are recorded. You'll find them on our YouTube channel. All right, everybody, good luck with your trading. Wishing you great profits. Bye for now.